Who's the squad looking ahead of this one? Yeah, we're a wee bit, uh, wee bit battered and bruised off the uh, off the back of Saturday. Um, the medical guys have been working hard. Um, I think the kind of three main ones was was obviously Dan Casey, James Furlong, Harry Payton. Um, they all took kind of significant blows, injuries. Um, Dan probably been the worst of the three. Uh, James obviously had a problem with his knee, and Harry um, was his hip. So we, we need to assess. Uh, we need to assess these guys over the next couple of days. But I think, I think it's fair to say, knowing the three characters and the personalities, they're, they're really robust players. They're guys that kind of get out there and train every day and put themselves forward for games um, every week. So for them to come off the park, it tells you that there's obviously been something fairly significant there. Two games to go left of the season. There'll be plenty of players that will be wanting to just have that opportunity to show what they can do. Yeah, there is, there is, and and, and I suppose this is where I need to be measured and I need to be balanced as well because um, there's a lot of guys who've been training um, and pitching themselves forward to to offer something to the football club. But I think the main the, the main thought process when uh, when I started in that first game against uh, St Mirren was to try and get a level of consistency in my team selection. That was always really important to me. Always has been. To be fair, and it becomes difficult when you're not winning games because you're always trying to find a solution. Um, I think the fact that we've been in such good form and winning games, then it sort of makes it easy. The team sort of speaks for itself. Um, so a case of trying to get a balance in, in, in what we do and awarding good performances in training, um, the correct application, the correct mindset. Um, and, you know, I'll, I've got an idea in my head again, as always, that the, the players are the first people to know what I'm going to be doing and what I'm thinking about on the Wednesday. So I've, I've got a right good plan in my head of what I, how I want to go about it again against Livingston, which becomes a completely different game. Um, but I'll try and do that with as much consistency as I possibly can. With two games left of this season, if you put results aside, what are the main things you're wanting to see from your team over the course of these next two games? I just we we work so hard on a game plan. Now everybody everybody tells you that every single week, and they, and, and and they all do. There's a lot of good managers in this country. There's a lot of really good teams, um, and I think it's I, I spoke where I try to be consistent all the time about how we started in that first game against St Mirren um, and, and we had to be competitive we had to have a structure that made us hard to play against but I always spoke about it you guys have sat and heard me saying it about adding on the layers about how we play in possession out of possession and we do work tirelessly on it we do spend an awful lot of time you know we watch all the videos um, but the most important part for me I think a lot of people speak about watching videos how do you replicate that on the park how do you make the players so aware of what's coming next uh, your game plan but also within that game plan we keep speaking about our principles so in answer to your question it's important that I see so many of these principles we'll go and do our post-match um, video analysis just after this here um, and the most pleasing aspect for me I think we've man managed to narrow it down to around 10 minutes and it's 10 minutes of the stuff that we work on every single uh, every single day um, which I've been encouraging to become better from the players um, so that's what I need to see in the next two games we're not going to deviate from those basic principles in and out of possession and it's just uh, it's it's key to me that we can we can maintain those standards but see those general principles of how we play as a team. Yeah, again, I think we've been speaking about this now for the last couple of weeks since the split. That was the, the goal that was available to us on off the back of the split. So yeah, the fact that we find ourselves in that position we would love to we would love to finish in in that in that role, in that in that slot if you like. Um but I think what's what's been the most pleasing thing if I try and take out placings and everything else, the most pleasing aspect for me is from getting us from the position that we were in um to the position that we find ourselves in just now. I think it's been a remarkable run. Um it's testament to the players to how they've performed um, to how they've went about their business um, and, I, and I think if we continue to do that over the next two games we give ourselves a real good chance to finish in that in that position that's not where the season hinges it's not where the season hinges my, my remit and my role coming in to, to take this job on which looked pretty bleak for a spell um, was, was to get us out a bottom spot joint bottom position in the league um, I think when you look at uh, our goal difference our run of results the teams we've played against home and away um, I think it shows a, a significant Significant difference and a, and, a, and a significant change to our fortunes at football club, and that's that's been a really pleasing aspect for me. Do you think that's now the players want to prove something to themselves and to the fans that they can be a lot? I don't I, I don't know I, I don't know specifically what it's down to. Um I always give I always give praise to the players, um and rightfully so. Um I keep speaking about not not getting bored of what you do. Um so if we find a formula that wins us games of football and makes us really competitive and makes us easy on the eyes, scoring goals, not conceding them, then never become bored with that. So um I, I hope that and I, I keep saying in that first couple of games that we played St. Mirren 
and and Hearts, I felt that we were able to show the players a, a plan and a formula that was that, that was potentially going to work for us between sort of then and the end of the season. It's tweaked and it's changed through different games, um, but that that's on them to maintain that standard. So in terms of how it's changed, um, I think it's a realisation and understanding of the position you find yourself in. Um, and, and, and again, I keep going back to this formula and this way of playing. Um, I'm not sitting here saying style or anything like that at all. It's basic principles, it's fundamentals of the game that can make you a tough nut to to crack. I think you look at the goals conceded, three three clean sheets in the last three games tell you that story, um, but also the goals and the chances that we create, um, and it is, it's simple, simple principles, and if we can stick to that, not just now, but long term, um, then I think it gives us a chance to to really grow as a team and a football club and, and, and try and reach some decent highs. What are you expecting from the last team on Wednesday that I want you to focus on? Yeah, I, I, I probably... Probably acknowledge the fact I, I, I wish I had a pound for every time I'd heard people saying that Livingston are on holiday mode and that they've kind of put the tools away. I think they've proved a point again on Saturday uh, against Dundee United fighting for their lives. I don't think that's in Livingston to to not try and not perform. Um, it's not in David Martindale, and I, I know that for a fact. Um, you know, people create these stories because they've lost a few games and their form's not quite been what it was. Um, but I think by winning that game on Saturday and how they do it, I think it shows their intent. And I think it shows you what they're about as a football club. So I fully expect Livingston will be coming to play against us on on Wednesday. Um, we we real desire to get three points, the same as we will. And um, a lot of people may look at it as two teams that are safe in the division and, and, and you kind of go through the motions I, I probably think it will be the complete opposite to be honest with you and I, I know I'll be putting those demands on my players and I'm and I'm fairly certain you guys will have spoken to Davey uh, often enough to realise that that's what he'll be he'll be asking for from his players too So can I ask you about um, there's an interview in the, the Herald and Saturday with Louis Malt we spoke about having unfinished business here and he says he's, he's back to fitness after his operation is that Given what might transpire here with some players out of contract, some of are, is that something that might be of interest to you? You read that? Or? Nah, I, I, I've seen the article, I've, I've seen Louis, I, I don't really know Louis too well, I had uh, maybe only a couple of weeks here I think with him, um, when he was when, when he was a player he was obviously carrying an injury, um, he's a guy that's that, that's got an amazing record and, and is loved by the supporters here but I, I can't say that there's any truth in, uh, well, I, I don't think Louis was, was saying that there was anything happening there, I think he was just sort of meaning about his, his relationship with the football club, his past, um, obviously a frustration that he wasn't able to offer too much in terms of being on the park previously with the injury he was carrying, so um, I don't think there's I don't think there's anything in the in the story to read too much between the lines. Um, I think obviously um, we find ourselves in a position where I'm happy with the squad, but I think everybody knows that there's that, that there might be obvious changes there. with guys been out of contract, and you know other people being interested in their players. So again, it just it becomes my job to try and make sure that Motherwell have the strongest group of players that's available with the finance you have. I keep saying this as well. I'm sorry to keep going on about money but um, it, it does come down to a situation where um, y you can be hamstrung by what you have to put out there and um, the contracts that are already on offer and the guys that are already in contract so um, I've touched on it that 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 is at this stage is kind of maxed out if you like for next season um, so how that transpires over the next couple of weeks is probably going to be down to Decisions of players, it's going to be decisions maybe other football clubs, whether they're, they're, they're offering money or putting bids in for our players and stuff like that. It's not to say that, that Motherwell will accept that, but th those are the types of situations that will, will change the, the personnel that we have at our football club. A goal for Kevin Van Veen. Um, we mentioned here a few weeks ago you said that Motherwell are associated with great number nines like Higdon, Pettigrew. What more does he have to do to mention the same kind of breath as them or as he did already? Uh, I, I don't know, I, probably again not for me to say, uh, I've, worked with, I've worked with a lot of good players, a lot of good strikers um, in my time, played with a lot of good ones uh, and Kevin's right up there, so from a personal note, from a personal point of view, um, I, th I think he's I think he's absolutely tremendous, he's uh, a joy to work with on a daily basis, he's a joy to watch out there when, when, when you see him in a match day as well, um, I think that through time, um, noting his achievements this season and probably what he's done before, at Motherwell will start to start to have him as that kind of iconic figure at this football club and, and up there with some of the great number nines that the, that the club's had. 
again, you look at longevity, I've always been a guy for longevity. You, you, I think a lot of the guys that you've mentioned there has maybe been through longer periods of time. Um, but no, I certainly think that most Motherwell fans will um, will be looking at Kevin Van Veen as one of those one of those favoured number nines and one of those favoured goal scorers. And I think it's a brilliant kind of accolade to have.